Hey everybody, Portland Chess Shop here to bring you the chess action. And we have Grandmaster Shanklin against uh, Grandmaster Hess playing in a blitz chess death match on chess.com. So Shanklin lost the first game. He was white. Uh, and now he is employing the Karo Khan, which I think is a suspicious opening. But he's a Grandmaster. And, you know, it's it's playable. I think, like, you know, Karpov played it before and stuff. So it, it can be good. It's not my, my cup of tea. But the knight comes to g5. That's the kind of thing I like to see. I've seen Sack on on f7 before which is pretty awesome but i don't think that we're going to see that immediately i think we'll we'll, we'll see a retreat gm has us down a little bit of time so he may not be quite as familiar with this opening as shanklin i think from the pre-game interviews it sounded like shanklin prepared for the match while gm has didn't uh gm has i think is just known for uh being a good player rather than being like a person who prepares a lot. Like there's a lot of strong players right now who are known for being a little bit lazy, like uh, Nakamura, Ma even Magnus Carlsen is sometimes called lazy. And so, yeah, it doesn't always, it's not always about like, it's sometimes about talent and not completely about just like raw, you know, uh, opening theory or raw study or whatever. So the dark square bishops have been exchanged. Black basically has sort of a hedgehog type position, but it looks comfortable. I think this knight is sort of awkwardly pr placed on h3. So uh, I could say that maybe the position is equal because this knight is awkward. This knight comes forward. We see that uh, we don't really want to open lines probably because the, this bishop is pretty good. Um, he could do some potentially nasty things with like, you know, queen up, trying to threaten checkmate. Uh, this rook is also on the same line as a queen. So you want to set up things like that in chess. You want to set up, you want to put your rook on the same line as the queen, not because you can exploit it immediately, but because there could be a potential. Like he opens the, he opens the D file, then he checks on F7 and takes the queen. So certain possibilities are are potentially like latent in the position, and you want to uh, learn to set up those opportunities, see them, and attack when you have them. So for example, the queen can't take right now because then just bishop check, king takes, rook takes queen. So that's you know simple but very effective. So that pawn is defended uh, through a uh, through a discovered attack. Tactic. So I'm trying to trying to show you guys some of the basic elements of chess. Uh, like you know, Bobby Fisher teaches chess. That's a good uh, chess book that teaches some of the basic tactics. I'm trying to you know explain some of the tactics for the audience. The knight comes to the center, attacking this this knight, which is undefended. So this knight will move. I I don't know if it's going to take. If it's it could even you know, come over here. You come back. You know, come over here to come back over here to here. So this knight has some potential. Yeah, so he comes over here. You know, it's good. Mikhail Tall talked about how he just liked to put his pieces near his opponent's king and then figure out the rest later. And I like that. I, I try to do that in my own games. So here uh, he could set up some sort of attacks on his opponent's king just in virtue of having a knight that's near. You know, he could sacrifice. He could, you know, play queen over at any time. So the knight comes over here to defend. It's good to have one knight posted in the center and another knight defending your king side. So one pair of knights are exchanged. The bishop retreats. Now the pawn is um, is defended by the rook immediately instead of through a discovered attack. He can set up some checkmate threats. And, uh, you know, checkmate threats, that's... Awesome. Oh, black threatens checkmate. So g2 is threatened. We could see f3 potentially. No, we see f4. So this move just has a little bit more dynamic potential. He could play f5 at some point. Uh, so the queen is attacking g2, defended by the queen. So now the queen is the defender uh, and must protect that square until he can overprotect uh, that square. So the queen is kind of pinned to defending. And f4, I think f5 could be, could be played, trying to exploit some squares. The knight decides to retreat, which is interesting. I like when my when my knights go forward, but sometimes it's good to retreat. I'm not sure if he wants to exchange, or it's, it seems like he wants to do exchange, but I'm not sure why he would want to do that. So the queen moves here. This move, it seems really good. We're threatening checkmate. G6 can't really be played because just knight takes G6 is... Uh, devastating because like pawn takes back you know mate 
So the knight has to come back to the square. So I, I did predict that correctly. He lost a tempo with that move. Now f5 is played. The rook moves over to attack the queen. So now the queen has to move again. But f5 has been played. Look look at how if pawn takes, then bishop can take back attacking the rook, which I think I think is interesting. So white is using sort of some move order uh, tricks to maybe gain some tempos, gain a little bit of time. Which could be good. So f5 here, we see that uh, Hess is up about a minute. Hess being uh, a little bit higher rated, about I think 75 points higher rated on the USCF and FIDE scale. So could be the favorite in this match. He's definitely playing pretty well. So the queen takes back so that he wants to keep two pawn islands rather than three. If you take back with this pawn, then you have three pawn islands. Pawn islands are bad. We see that uh, white has three pawn islands, which is uh, black's potential endgame advantage if black can hold on this potential this attack that's that's sort of developing, it's sort of latent, you know, it's not like, it's not, he doesn't have a direct checkmate attack, but just things could slip out of his control. The I think that this is a key square that is uh, weak in this position. E, E4 and D5, I think the light squares are all very important in this position. Both players have a light square bishop attacking a lot of light squares. These light squares controlled by uh, white and this long diagonal by black. So this knight is also controlling, controlling some light squares as well as this knight is also controlling light squares. You see that? Um, I don't think that these light squares are too critical right now. I think that these light squares are important, these two center light squares. So the pawn moves up so that uh, potentially if he does move the bishop, then this a2 pawn won't fall. Just over, you know, sort of defending. So the rook comes down to attack d4. This pa this pawn is the this is the this is the dark square that I think is significant in the position. It is a little bit weak. It's, it can't be defended by other pawns. That's why it's called an isolated pawn right here. So it is attacked, and uh, we see that Hess is now down on time. Hess is down 20 seconds, which is I think very significant. He was up on time. It looks like this could be anybody's game. He makes another pawn move, creating some dark square weaknesses, which I think could be weak. I mean, his king had some luft. I'm not sure that this is really like the move that he needed to play. I think he was just could find the move that he that would create some advantages in the position. So bishop f5. I think that that's a good move. Uh, attacking the queen, controlling a lot of you know interesting kind of key squares in this position. And I don't think g6 will be able to be played because I think that uh, this knight, you know, like g, everything's just going to be too weak. The f6 square is going to be too weak. The g6 square is going to be too weak. So I don't think that he is going to be able to play g6. So I think that bishop is pretty strong. I could imagine the queen coming to f2, for example. I think that this queen could move. No, he decides to move up the rook. This is, seems like a good good. So this is lateral defense. Often uh, defending laterally is good. So this b2 square, this g2 square is now defended by this rook, as well as the d4 square is still defended by the rook, and he has the option of playing uh, rook to d4 to overprotect the key um, p the key square in, in, in his position. If the d4 pawn falls, then uh, I think a lot, of, a lot of pieces will be exchanged. Oh, an interesting move. The bishop plays to c4, and it, the knight has to take, and luckily the, this rook move had defended the queen, so he was sort of setting up against that that threat, and I think that that is good, that's why you want to like overprotect you know, all your pieces, that's what grandmasters do. So the rook immediately moves down, he's now up about uh, 15 seconds, this rook takes, so pawns are exchanged, he gets the outside pawn for the center pawn, so four pawns against four pawns, the b2 pawn is attacked, which is on a dark square, we have a bishop against a knight, bishops are a little bit better. I think in, the, in in this sort of sort of position controls more squares on both sides of the board. B4 is played. The A3 pawn is defended by the rook, so he won't, he won't be able to attack that square immediately. So he do, he does come down here though to pin this rook basically on this diagonal. If the rook moves off this off this column, then uh, the rook will be able to take on A3. So now the rook is pinned on the A column, in some sense, and. We will see how he defends. He could uh, overprotect it with rook f3, for example. 
I think that he wants to try to create a pass pawn. He's got two pawns over here versus one pawn over here. He wants to try to create a pass pawn. Knights are notoriously bad against outside pass pawns, which is exactly what White wants to create. White wants to play uh, a4, a5, create an outside pass pawn, and uh, be able to promote that pawn with, with this bishop. So the knight comes to the center. Uh, knights are good in uh, in time trouble, actually. So... Uh, like uh, Fide Master Elysium, I've talked to him before. He told me that uh, he would rather have two knights than a queen in bullet chess because when you have two knights, it's just it's so frustrating. The knight is just moving in all these different directions, and you can't really like pre-move against the knight because there's just too many ways that the knight can move. So the knight does retreat though, and the rooks double up on the file. The king is coming towards the center, which seems dangerous to me. The king's coming all the way over. This check is now going to alleviate the attack that was um, impending on g2. He checks and takes here. This is pretty good. He's up um, a few seconds. He's he's up, uh, I don't know, six seconds. Pretty close match here. So b5 is played. We have uh, white is up a pawn and he's up four seconds, but he really has to play fast here. This is really a bullet, a bullet chess moment. He needs to move quickly. He needs to pre-move. He's got. He's up six seconds. This move is good. It attacks all the different squares out here. He could take here. He attacks. He attacks the knight. He's threatening some moves here. This this square is attacked, but it's defended by the bishop. He could exchange. No, he decides to take. He has some material advantage. He takes out here. So white has taken a lot of pawns. White is up uh, seven seconds. I think the seven seconds is important, but he's going to have to play quickly. Let's see if he can make some good moves, some checks, and take advantage. He attacks the knight. The knight moves. How is he going to finish him? So the bishop attacks, and g2 is played. He sacrifices the bishop just pretty prematurely. Oh no, that was a sick tactic. So there was a, there was a family fork check, and then he took the rook, which is a good move. The knight, the knight comes back to the center. We have a very close match. This is a, the best that uh, Black can be hoping for at this point is a draw, though, because he's out of material. And I think with 13 seconds, this is an easy win. He's going to just move his king, promote this pawn, and if the knight tries to come over here, then this pawn gets promoted into a queen. He's 10 seconds of mate, which he's a grandmaster. He has experience playing fast chess. I'm pretty sure that this is an easy mate, but at the same time, this is the wrong color square because if he pushes, then the king comes here and he won't be able to finish off his opponent. So the bishop is attacked. He's It's five seconds against four seconds. The pawn moves forward. He's going to push again, I think. No, but if he pushes, then it'll be a draw. This game could be a draw. Two seconds for uh, Shanklin. He gets three seconds. And the knight comes down here. Can he finish him? The game is over. He resigns with two seconds left. What a game.